welcome back to another episode of my 31 animals in 31 days challenge series. Today we are going to be painting humpback whales, a species near and dear to my heart as a marine biologist. But if you want to see the video on how I painted this fox portrait, you can check it out in the cards above. Today we are going to be working on humpback whales. This is another photograph by Wade and Robin Hughes. They are photographers from Australia who I met when I did research with Hal Whitehead at Dalhousie University. So Wade and Robin have done his book cover for The Cultural Lives of Whales. Put it up there. It's a fabulous book and they're fabulous humans who are just so sweet. So we have been working this past year on a collaboration of a bunch of their photography. I painted a lot of it last year in my 31 day challenge and I just wanted to paint another one because their photographs are just gorgeous. So we're gonna paint that today and we'll see you there. I, I love this photograph. I love how it's a mum and calf. I love the perspective in it. I love how the calf is going to the surface. I just think it's such a, an amazing photograph and I'm, I feel so lucky to be able to paint it and give my spin of interpretation on it. So at this stage, when I'm blocking in the colors, I've drawn the lines, have the chalk marked where the deeper wrinkles were. So I'm actually painting around the chalk and then leaving those chalk lines to then be the shadow shape. I did this technique as well with the elephant and it worked really well. And the main trick with whale skin is to try and get the texture. There's actually a lot of texture going on. They have barnacles and other things like on their face that you have to paint in and it's important to get the different colors and the contrast right so that you can get the perspective. When you're painting land animals, it's a lot easier to kind of get the perspective of your image because you have things like ground, like trees, other elements on land that can help really give you a lot of perspective to your paintings. Underwater can be a little tricky because you really have an empty space. It's not empty, it's filled with water, but it's, it's really difficult to try and get that depth of field in, an, in a painting. And whales especially have this gorgeous round shape that you really want to make sure you pay attention to and can highlight for them. So the trick to do with this is to add more water in front of anything that's further away to try and trick your eye into getting that perspective. We'll get more into that later. For now, I am uh, working on the barnacles to try and add some texture to the whale. You can see like the background skin is still quite early in its blending phase. I jumped to the barnacles because I was trying to make this painting happen fairly quickly and then I go back and help smooth out some of those edges um, later. And this is an example of a trick I would do very different from my process being in the 31 day challenge and having this time pressure than not. And you just got to move forward and take big leaps in your work to make really quick progress and then kind of deal with the finishing details later. This animal would have taken me much longer to paint normally, and I, I paint a lot of whales. It's probably the thing I've painted the most of this past year in 2021. And I've also gone in and added a lot of the other texture to the skin. There's a lot of lines and different scars on whale skin typically, and you can kind of see how they get bold near its face, and then they really get really subtle and soft as you go back in towards its tail. So now I'm going back in and smoothing out some of those blended areas. Whales are such an interesting animal to paint because they're not an animal that people see a lot of. And I'm using the background color that I have saved. I go into this a lot more in my Skillshare class that I've mentioned. And I, I save that and then I'm pretty much just painting with that and white. And same thing when it's with its fin, I really worked hard to try and create that sort of depth so that the fin and anything from the eye forward is more of a black white color than is the rest of its body as it kind of fades into the distance of the painting. The whole mama whale though is very much in the tones of the background. You're gonna see when I go to paint the calf that we use an entirely different color palette for the calf to help add that perspective and depth of the field. So I've gone in and I'm trying to work out the tail of the calf, it's in a pretty interesting angle that's a little tricky to try and make not look funny. So it took a little bit to kind of re-smooth over that ridge that's kind of going up the middle of its tail. 
is the calf is kind of twisted around in different shapes and it's it's kind of tricky for your eye to really get a hold of it um, for, for me to paint it and now we have our calf we're gonna paint so I've gone in and I'm highlighting the fin and I'm adding gray so there is no blue tone in this this is just straight black white we're pretty much doing a chromatic palette for the calf and because I started with a bit more blue and I wasn't really liking how the color was, you're gonna see me entirely repaint the whole top half of the whale to try and re-get re that perspective that I was going for in this painting. It's fin that's closest to us, the one I'm painting right now, has a really interesting perspective because the shadows of the bumps from the light above really create such a unique texture along the, the front edge of the fin that I think is really fun. So to kind of get rid of that blue base, you see me go in with pretty much just a black wash of paint and it's it's kind of a watered down version so I, I can still see the lines through it. It's not entirely opaque. And then I'm just trying to make sure I don't lose places like the eye. And I'm trying to create that gradient from going black and white near its face to going to more blue tones towards its uh, lower belly. This is a lot darker than the whale is going to turn out, but I wanted to make sure I had the right base tone uh, from the very beginning of repainting this whale. So now I'm going in and adding kind of like the darkest color first and then one tone up, and then I'll go in and add another highlight in the middle of that. So that's a trick to kind of create those gradients in, in stripes really quickly. And you can see this next section I've gone in with just making it black and white. There's not a very smooth transition yet from the black and white front whale near its head to the more blue and white tone um, near its belly, but we, we smooth that out in a, in a bit. And the, the ridges on a whale's mouth are just so fascinating. These are baleen whales. For those of you who are, are un, more unfamiliar with whales, there's two different categories. There's the toothed whales, which are sperm whales, all your dolphin species, all your, all your porpoise species. And then you have your baleen whales, which is a much smaller group. These are the filter feeder whales. So that's why they have this lines and these ridges along their lower jaw because they have to be able to expand their mouth cavity to such a huge degree when they're filter feeding all this krill. I also have a commission I'm gonna be working on in February where I get to paint lunge feeding humpback whales where they're lunging out of the water and you get to see the actual baleen in their in their mouth. And that uh, that painting is going to Washington State and it's I'm so excited to get back to painting it. I love I love doing this kind of commission for people. It's perfect right up my alley. And then get all those beautiful texture. So young calves don't have as many textures on their kind of near their mouth area as adults, but they still have some. And now that we've zoomed back out, you can really see the tone of the calf is so much more monochromatic than it is to the adult. As always, thank you so much for watching this video until the end. I am so happy that you're still here. I hope you enjoyed watching some of my tips and tricks for gaining depth and perspective underwater. I absolutely love painting underwater scenes. It's one of my favorite things to create, especially because you can create a whole magic with it that you can't necessarily see. So this was from a reference photograph, but I've done a lot of cetacean species that I've painted. Cetaceans are whales and dolphins. And I've painted them from stranded animals because you can change a lot with paint. You can take out scars and wounds and bring a whole new life to an animal. And that's something that I really enjoy doing personally for a lot of different marine creatures. So I actually have an hour long Skillshare class where you can watch me paint in real time an underwater scene and go over in more detail some of my techniques for making animals look three dimensional in their oceanic background. So if you wanna check out that class, the link will be above and the playlist to the rest of these videos will be down below. And of course, if you're here cause you like painting, like watching painting and learning about it, hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell button, and I would really appreciate it as a small budding channel for 2022 goals. I hope you are enjoying my 31 animals in 31 day challenge, and we'll see you soon. We're gonna go paint a snail now.